humankind has created some iconic shapes, the pyramid, the wheel, the cube, and the pretzel. The pretzel? Yes, the pretzel. In Germany, no other baked good stands for the baker's craft like the pretzel. You can tie yourself in knots, but you can't escape it. They're everywhere, in every variation. And even more so in southern Germany, where a day without pretzels is like a night without beer. I love them. I always like them. Can't do without them. It's a piece of culture. I'm a pretzel fan. Who exactly invented the pretzel and gave them their unique shape? We'll get to that later. But first, how do you bake pretzels? Even on this, there's no agreement. Bavarians and Swabians have their own variations. Which one is better is a topic of debate. The first to present its case is the Bavarian pretzel in Munich. Sebastian Brüchelmeier is the sixth generation of his family to bake pretzels. For me, personally, uh, is this the form that the Bayerische Bäckerhandwerk einfach widerspiegelt. The dough is made of wheat flour, water, yeast, and a blend of salt, malt, and margarine. First, the dough is portioned out, then rolled, and looped into the proper knot with touch-ups by hand. In many bakeries, machines do most of the work, not least because workers are increasingly hard to come by. Yeah, a baker must definitely in Bayern noch eine Breze schlingen können. It's auch Teil der Gesellenprüfung. So, how does it work? It's easy for a master baker. I can learn this in five minutes. lernen. This is not so schwierig. This is einmal so, then so, and so. Total simple. This is ja eigentlich auch das, was die Leute am meisten fasziniert. Das Schlingen. Wow! After the pretzels rise, they are getting coated with a diluted soda lye solution, which is why they're sometimes called lye pretzels. But isn't soda lye a bit dangerous? Lauge is eigentlich ätzend, ja, aber im Backofen durch die hohe Temperatur kommt ein chemischer Prozess in Gange und aus dieser ursprünglichen Lauge wird ein ungefährliches Salz. Drum schmecken auch Laugenprodukte, wenn man nur mal mit der Zunge an die Laugenoberfläche geht, leicht salzig, unabhängig vom Salz, mit dem wir es dann bestreuen. The uniform shape, the chestnut brown and of course the splits in the crust from the baking. That all adds up to the typical Bavarian pretzel. And what about the Swabian variation? We're off to Stuttgart, where Harold Dressler is a fourth-generation master baker. I personally eat a Laugenbrötchen more than a pretzel. No problem. But this is about pretzels. In Swabia, as everywhere, they start with the dough, but with more margarine than the Bavarian ones. The most obvious difference is the shape, especially noticeable in what's called the belly and the arms. Das wichtige ist an der schwäbischen Pretzel, die dünnen Ärmchen, dass die daher groß werden und der Bauch, der dann ähm, schön äh, schön, lock, schön locker ist und dann ähm, auch dann weich ist. The final and decisive step comes after the pretzels being coated with lye. Jetzt wird's geschnitten und dadurch wird die äh, der Bauch äh, der Schnitt wird ist, dann bleibt dann hell. Weil da keine Lauge hingekommen ist. And that's what defines a Swabian pretzel. Und wenn sie sie essen, dann knackt's. So how did the pretzel originate? There are many legends around this. Here's the Swabian one. In the 15th century, there lived a baker named Frieda, who fell into disfavor with Count Eberhard V, who sentenced him to death. But he was given another chance. He was told to create a pastry the sun would shine through three times. And Frieda had three days to do it, but nothing he tried worked. Not until the last day, inspired by his wife's own crossed arms, did he come up with the pretzel shape. The count was pleased and the baker could live. It's a nice story, but probably just a story. The pretzel shape is thought to be over a thousand years old, having evolved over time from a Roman ring to the present day version. Today's pretzels range from savory to sweet. 
die Frage, wann man sie isst, ist die falsche Frage. Die Frage sollte eher heißen, wann isst man sie nicht. Es gibt keine Uhrzeit, wo man keine Breze isst. Dementsprechend kann man sie immer essen und isst sie auch immer. Bavarians, for instance, might eat them with a traditional veal sausage for breakfast. Or during Oktoberfest. Swabians enjoy them, butter pretzels, for instance, at any time of day. They're also popular beyond Europe, especially in the United States. German immigrants introduced them to the country over 300 years ago. But the debate continues about which is the pretzel's top and bottom.